Hello everyone, this is Richard with the fourth Modern Health Span newsletter. First a disclaimer. In this newsletter series we will share the latest research studies and news in the health span field that we found interesting. It is not medical advice. So is 100 the new 80s? Do you know how many centenarians are in the world? Let's take a look at the chart from the recent United Nations report. According to the report, the number of centenarians is expected to rise to approximately 573,000 worldwide this year. And according to the World Atlas, the US has the highest number of centenarians in the world, with 97,000 living in the country. Japan comes second with 79,000. If any of you have followed Dr. David Sinclair for a while and watched his previous interviews or presentations, you may notice that he used to say this. And, and the future I think is really bright. You can imagine a future where a 90-year-old is just as healthy as a 50-year-old and still plays tennis and maybe we see people reaching their hundreds when uh, they can uh, see their great-grandkids graduate from uni. So that It seems that the future is here already. Mr. Loy Lettis is not in his 80s or his 90s. He is a centenarian who has four children, 11 grandchildren and 14 great-grandchildren and he is still playing tennis. Also, he's not living in a blue zone. He's living in Mountain View, a city in the US, a little south of San Francisco. The Mercury News asked about his secret of longevity. Mr. Lettis mentioned maybe it's working on the farm picking apples. It's very encouraging to read this news. Mr. Lettis is a very good example for a healthy centenarian, proving that you can still be healthy and active and still enjoy life and sports with your friends in your hundreds. Uh, but actually now we know there are genes in our bodies. There are seven of them that we work on called sirtuins. And these genes, we think, control the body's natural defenses against diseases and aging itself. And so the overall theme of my lab's research over at Harvard Medical School is to find ways to tap into our body's natural defenses and turn on these genes that, uh, that exist in our cells, uh, but they typically don't do a very good job. And so we're trying to make medicines that will turn on these pathways, these very ancient pathways, and boost them in a way that will slow down diseases. And As Dr. Sinclair said, sirtuins are a key to longevity, and he's looking for a drug to switch them on. This recently released paper reported on a study on blood markers, including some of the sirtuins, with a resistance training exercise program. The study looked at the blood levels of CERT1, CERT3, and CERT6, along with PGC1-alpha and telomerase, all of which are key proteins involved with longevity. 30 men around 66 years of age were divided into two groups, one of which did resistance training and a control group. Blood tests were done at the beginning and at the end of the trial. It showed significant increase in the markers, relative to the participants at the start of the study and to the control group. The authors conclude it seems resistance training may have beneficial effects on cellular senescence and also improved impaired mitochondrial protein and enzymatic functional induced aging. Dr. David Sabatini was one of the key people in the discovery of mTOR around 26 years ago and has since then continued to work on this very important molecule for aging. This week he tweeted about a paper that he co-authored that has just been released to BioArchive as a preprint. The paper reports on a CRISPR screen which looks at the upstream proteins that regulate the mTORC1 growth control pathway. As it says, up until now, these were not fully understood. mTOR is a key modulator of aging and age-related diseases. Based on the presence of nutrients and growth factors, it is a master regulator for whether our body is in growth or consolidation mode. A lot of work has been done in the aging field to understand mTOR and how to control it. As in this picture, a large number of proteins and other molecules provide input to mTOR. Understanding these in detail will help us to control its behavior. In this study, Dr. Sabatini and his colleagues used a CRISPR-Cas9 genetic screening strategy to pinpoint genes that regulate mTORC1 activity. This is an exciting step forward in understanding this protein which plays such a key part in aging. In our anti-aging journey, we are trying different formats of NMN to see which one is most suitable for us. We then plan to take that form long term. After we finished our three months NMN lozenges sublingual trial, we have started a new three months trial with enhanced absorption NMN. 
Our new NMN was just delivered. We are happy that ProHealth has partnered with YouthEva, which is the same brand used in the first human clinical trial on efficacy of NMN. In our next video, we shall talk in more detail on why we chose enhanced absorption for our trial. Please stay tuned. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and I will speak to you again soon.